Welcome. In the Algebra 2 course, we often teach students the concept of a function, which is very curious because in the history of mathematics, this is a very, very late notion. People didn't think to do this until oh, probably the time of Euler, the late 1700s. I think he was the first to introduce this notion. Um, it's not actually natural, and kids actually have a hard time with it, and rightly so. It seems obvious to those that are familiar with the concept, but it's actually there's something uh, developmentally curious about really gra grappling what a function is. So let me talk about what a function is on a very sort of basic level, and uh, for more details, everything is actually written out in Volume 4 of my Thinking Mathematics series on the website. So this is just a brief introduction. I'll talk about some of the curious things that, that drive people bonkers about it. Okay, first of all, in a very loose sense, a function is nothing more than a rule that goes from one set of objects to another set. And most people use the letter F, whatever rule they call it. They call it the, the function rule F. Um, what it does, it assigns to each element of the first set one and precisely one element of the other set. For example, my function could be the mothering function. It goes from the set of people to the set of women. And the rule is assign to each person his or her biological mother. And that's fine. For example, the mother of Jim, namely me, would be Abby. And the, the, the one restriction was that each person is assigned one and one, only one object. Since each person only has one biological mother, they might have many emotional mothers, but one biological mother, this is indeed a function. Um, if I had a sibling, which I don't, I suppose uh, her name was Susie, it turns out if, if the mother of Susie was also Abby, that's okay. Two objects on the left can be assigned the same thing on the right, as long as... Uh, one person on the left is not assigned to two separate things on the right. So it's just a rule that assigns to each object in one set, um, whoops, each object in one set, x, beginning set, a unique object of the right-hand set. That's all a function is a rule. Now that is indeed loose because sometimes things can be a little crazy and unclear. Um, for example, well, actually let me do some straightforward things first. Let's look at the daughter function. It goes from the set of all people to the set of all women. And the rule is assign to each person his or her daughter. And we would say that's not a function, basically because it has two serious problems. Not everyone has a daughter. The daughter of Jim, I'm afraid, does not exist. I don't have a daughter. Um, or some people uh, might have more than one daughter. For example, the daughter of Dave, I happen to know he has three daughters. I don't know who to assign. So the rule for a function is assigned to only just one object to each person at the left-hand set. So this, I'm afraid, is not a function. Uh, another example might be, go. Uh, let's call this the digit function. And we'll do, do it in blue. It goes from the set of whole numbers to the set of one, two, three, up to nine. And the rule is assign to each whole number its beginning digit. For example, D of three, six, nine would be three. And D of seven, two, eight, oh, eight, seven, one would be 7. Assigned to each whole number its first digit. D of 2 would be 2. And this is why it's, it's a hard concept for algebra students. I don't know why we put it in the algebra course, because it, this looks like something middle schools are taught to mean is multiplication. I'm not saying D times 369 is 3. I'm saying the function which I've called D, the D applied to the number 369 gives the answer 3. Very confusing notation. Um, but that's fine. That's, that's a, that's a well-defined function. Um, as another example to show that things can be just crazy, as I alluded to before, uh, let's do the function, let's call it the t function, for the true function. Go from the set of all sentences, whoops, terrible handwriting, to the set tf. And the rule is, assign to each sentence the letter t if the sentence is true, the letter f if the sentence is false. For example, t of liquid water is wet, the truth value of that I would say is true. Or T of ducks go moo would be false. Whereas T of this sentence is false is one of these classic paradoxes and I have no idea what to assign to that. Um, if you think about it, if the sentence is true, then what it's saying is true, that it's false. Oops, that's, that's a contradiction. If the sentence is, is actually false, then what it's saying is actually true. Oops, another contradiction. The rule that I gave up here is very strange. So mathematicians actually had a very hard time trying to pin down a very good, precise definition of what a function is. You can't just say it's a rule, because they have to ask what a rule is, and then things get murky. Anyhow, but at this beginning level, we'll just stick with that. And in mathematics, you notice I haven't even mentioned a single number yet, except for just a little whole number example. 
we usually think of functions that go from the set of numbers to the set of numbers. For example, I could do the squaring function that goes from all the real numbers to all the real numbers, assigned to each number x its square. So f assigned to the number 2 would be 4, f assigned to the number negative 3 would be 9, f of a half would be its square, a quarter, and so on. Uh, notice that the right-hand set I said all real numbers, it actually turns out this function only ever gives me positive answers. Or it might actually give me 0, because I believe that f of 0 would be 0 squared, which is 0. Uh, now we're sort of into fancy language, we can ask what's the domain and the range of a function. The domain means all the allowable inputs, and this one I can just put in anything I like and everything will be fine. And the range is the types of numbers that will come out. Um, Okay, that's just fancy language. One can just get into that as, as much as one wishes, and one can read like volume 4 for that. Uh, some functions, let me do the square root function, do have some, some delicacies to them. Uh, where's my pen? Let's do this symbol. It goes from real numbers to real numbers, assigned to each number x its square root. The square root of x. Um, this one's a little strange. I've got to be careful with its domain. It's not really going for the set of all real numbers. I guess I want it to go from the set of all positive reals. So the square root of 4, for example, would be 2. The square root of 9 would be 3. The square root of 10 would be whatever the square root of 10 is. That's a function. Now, one can do all sorts of things with functions. And a good way to think about functions is to actually think of a picture. So I personally always think of a function as some sort of machine. Do, 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 which I, I, I know I always seem to draw it like this. If you look at my book, you see I keep drawing it like this. So a lot of people think of a machine where things go into the machine, some input x, let's call this the f machine, and it gurgles and chuckles about and smoke comes out and eventually, you know, 30 seconds later, out pops another value, the, the value of x transformed by the function. So the scoring function, if you put in 2, out would come 4. The, if with the input of 3, out would come 9 if it's the scoring function, and so on. So we like to use this notation for the function f applied to the input x. This is actually really bad notation. In fact, kids have every right to complain about it. A better notation would be start with the value x and hit it with the transformation f. Uh, but that's not going to catch on. We read left to right. That actually would be the natural way to do it. But that's just not going to happen. People, Everyone will find that too confusing, I suspect. Anyhow, the nice thing about this machine picture is that one can play and think of all sorts of things to do. What if I took this output and put it back into the machine? Then out would come f applied to f of x. <gasps> How fun! Or I could t do that and put it back into the machine again. And that would come f applied to f, to of, of, uh, f applied to x. Uh, this notation is a little e awkward writing f, f, f of x. So people tend to write a little 3 on the top. It means put the m value x through the f machine thrice. So if it's the squaring function, f thrice of 2 would be, okay, put number 2 in once, gets me 4, put it in again, gives me 16, put it in again, gives me 2, 56. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is that uh, iteration becomes clear. What do you think I mean by f0 of x? Well, that would mean take the input x and don't put it through the machine at all, put it through 0 times. That's going to leave it as x. And then we get to lots of fun. What do I mean by f minus 1 of x? That would be kind of nasty. Take the number x, the input x, but put it through the machine backwards. That is, take this number x, I'll do it in bright green, and shove it through the gears of the machine and grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it, and see what comes out this way. Now, that might ruin the mechanisms. It has to be, we have to be pretty careful on this. Um, for the squaring function, I think I'm OK. If I put in the number 4 into the machine backwards, it must have been 2 that comes out if I do it backwards because 2 is indeed the input that would give me the answer 4. However, f minus 1 of say negative 4, I can't put negative 4 into this machine and grind it backwards because there is no number that gives me negative 4 as its square. So then there's delicacies to, to uh, ask, when can I put a, run a machine through itself backwards? And that's a good question. Um, and then lots of fun goes from there. Uh, I do need to mention that kids are naturally taught to draw pictures with functions. That is, they don't draw these crazy machines like I like to draw. They're taught to draw something called graphs. And 
I'm being very basic, I know, but let's just be clear. Let me go with the squaring function again. It goes from real numbers to real numbers. It takes an input x and it gives me its square. So, you know, we can draw a table of what happens if x is 1, like outcomes 1 squared, x is 2, outcomes 4, and x is 0, outcomes 0, and x is negative 3, outcomes 9. So, this will be what comes out. So, it's natural then to put this on a coordinate system. For 1, one, high, one in, outcomes something of height 1. For 2 in, outcomes something of height 4. And we're very used to doing this sort of thing. Negative 1 would be 1, negative 3, I guess, would be 9, way up there and we're used to drawing a picture like this. A lot of people think of a function as the graph, and we even write y equals f of x, because we're so programmed to call the inputs x, and we always want to call the outputs y. So, all right, so let's call the outputs y, uh, the formula applied to x. Um, this is grand, and people tell me this, this picture does indeed represent a function, because each input x does indeed have associated with it one unique output, so they say this is happy. Um, they'd say this sort of thing do, 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 is not the graph of a function, okay? Because if you put in a value x, it looks like you have three possible outputs attached to it. And you know, okay, we can say that's out out of the picture, that's bad or something. But actually, a mathematician thinks that's totally fine. And just to show how perverse I can personally be, since I've got a very general definition of a function, I'm going to say. We could do something like, let f b go from the set of all real numbers to all the sets of numbers. So example, in this case, if this, if this number is 2 and it happens to give me three possible outputs, that's fine. 2 gives me the set, I know, was it 1, 3, and 5, say. Yes, for each input, there is indeed one well-defined output. The output itself is a set. So, you know, what teachers call relations and make a big fuss with kids about the difference between a function and a relation is kind of nonsense to me because actually everything is a function. It's a rule that assigns to each input a particular output. Just in this case, the output happens to be a set. whoop de doo That's all fine. But that's me being a perverse mathematician in the high school world. I'm sorry about that. All right, very, very whirlwind run through of what a function is. Obviously, I've skipped over many details. I want to spend much time really digesting this properly. Go to volume four. Thanks.